dream, Ellie? Yeah. Oh, but it wasn't about me. I tell you, we have to talk to the school counselor about David. Oh. He's cutting classes. Oh, yeah. oh, and tonight was Jim and Candace. Early dinner. You know, and Amy is doing something funny with candles in her room. Thinks she wants to be a priest. priest. That's what I thought you said. Why can't you just worship Satan like any other normal, middle-class American kid? Why would anyone purposely set out to be a priest? The pay's lousy, the hours stink, and it's real hard to get a hold of the boss when you need him. Well, leave a message. That's my job, message lever. I detect a lack of inspiration today? Talk to Amy about the candles. Sure. You know, maybe after the service, you and I can take a walk down to the river, just the two of us. That'd be nice, but I have fire drills, some calls, then I have to go down to the vineyard and bless Joan Walridge's graves this afternoon. On Sunday? She insists. So she ever does. You're a message lever. She's a professional and sister. Yeah, well, her annual pledge to the church is 40% of my salary, such as it is. Well, you know, you, uh... You promised you were going to call Margaret Camden over at the Trinity Church about that opening? I will. It's on my to-do list, along with fixing the truck, repairing the toilet, and getting a new toothbrush. Uh -huh. How about tonight, after Jim and Candace? And what is this Candace stuff, anyway? Didn't she used to be candy? supposed to have candles in here. Now, who have you got here? Look at all these banana boy and horsies. Mother Mary, Teddy, what are you doing, a tea party? No, it's my congregation. You mean your congregation? Yes. Father, Son, and Holy Goat. Amen, see? Yes, that old Holy Goat, I see. But, darling, no more matches, you hear? But I was careful. I know you were, but no more matches. Okay. 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 Come here. Hey, Bob. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Bob, Bob, slow down. Did you, did you see anyone do this? I had absolutely nothing whatever to do with this. Nothing. J.D. Salinger will vouch for me. I thought you were talking to Thomas Pynchon. No, no, no. Pynchon. <laughs> Pynchon. <laughs> Way too reclusive. J.D.'s chatterbox compared to Pynchon. Salinger will vouch for me. Bob, Bob, don't worry. I know you didn't have anything to do with this. There, there's some coffee in the rectory. Go, go tell Ann I said you could have some and a donut. Oh, good. Can I sweep up? Sure. Oh. And later you can help get this off the wall. That would be stupendous, sir. JD, you're not gonna believe this. They're gonna let me sweep up. They're gonna give me a donut. But there's graffiti all over the place, and we gotta do something about this. Where have you been? I like to get up early. You get up early? 
Have you seen this? Any idea who could be this angry? Nope. You, uh, got a light? I thought we agreed you wouldn't smoke. No, you agreed I wouldn't smoke. You and Anne. Her name is Mom. Her name is Anne. Her title is Mom. As in the mom and the dad. Will the dad and the son have things to talk about? Yeah, not right now, okay? Some of you have asked me how we arrive at which lessons will be read at these Sunday services. It's a very interesting question. Let's all turn to page 888 in our Book of Common Prayer. Everybody find that? All three of you? Okay. You know, we haven't made any summer plans. Where do you want to go this summer? What about Bryce? We haven't done Bryce in a long time. Oh, red rocks shaped like cathedrals. Yeah, I've been there and done that. You guys are so jaded. We weren't jaded like that, were we? As I recall, we were carrying placards and marching against the... Um, you know what? Why don't we go to Paris? Yeah, how can we never go to Paris? Isn't there uh, some famous church there, Notre something? Can I say Grace again? Yes, Amy. David, we don't only go to places where there are churches. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, we also go to places with things shaped like churches. Grand Canyon, Bryce, Yosemite. Well, what about Paris, though? I mean, seriously, we could save the money. Yeah. I mean, Daddy, we, we could all work together and, and put our money together. I'm trying to say Grace. It usually comes at the beginning of the meal, honey. Paris one, Amy zero. Where are you going? Oh, school. It's Sunday. Oh, uh, then the library. Yeah, me too, people. I've got rehearsal today. Mwah. Bye, Dad. Mom, thank you for the wonderful lunch. I will do the dishes tonight, okay? I'm sorry, honey. Would you like to say grace now? No, thank you. Well, all in all, I'd say that was a fairly successful family values type meal. Do you want to help me with the dishes? Shame there wasn't much of a turnout for the service this morning. But the weather's so nice, and everybody just wants to be outside. Yeah, and what was the excuse last week? I'm sorry, honey. Somebody messed up the wall again. David saw it. I get the feeling he knows what happened. I also get the feeling he couldn't care less. It's your church, Joe. It's not his church. We weren't jaded, Annie. Are you where you thought you'd be when you were their age? I want to be a ballerina. I want to dance in New York City Ballet. It was just a dream, but I, I saw myself leaping my way through Paris and Vienna and Rome. Everywhere I looked, I saw adoring faces looking at me. <laughs> I want to give people a glimpse of the marvelous, the miraculous. A major dreamer. <laughs> I wanted to help people find their faith, their spiritual side. I believed I could be a guide to the Word of God, but I think at the bottom of my soul, I wanted to find God myself. But you could still dance, Annie. Not in Paris, Rome, or Vienna, but you could dance for yourself. All you need is the music. I'm not sure about this. Come on. 
on, get in. Get in. now. Redacted. Almost. Jackson Pollock, come in. Uh, Bob, a couple more coats, I think. A couple more coats. Roger that. Black room. Don't cut off your towel, Ernie. Don't you worry about me. You just show up on time for the fire drill. Humble, holy, and obedient, walking before thee in all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all glory and honor, world without end, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joe. That was wonderful. I don't think my grapes would grow if you didn't work your magic. Daniel, como estás de aquí? Oh, gracias, Padre. Mejor, mucho mejor. Oh, they never learn, do they? Mm baby after another. I thought after what with Ezekiel being born with this handicap, he would have exercised a little self-control. Ezekiel is, is a lovely child, Joan. You, you, oh, Joan, you really should see him. I know we have, before. yes. They're going to be living hand to mouth their whole lives. Not if you make certain you pay Daniel what he's worth. And see what you can do about that housing situation. Well, I guess that's that. Say hello to Anne, and don't forget, next week at the house, Bishop Tresk is coming. It would be good for you to cultivate him. Charge the line! Esperanza. Buenos dias, padre. Como esta? Muy bien, Daniel. Buenos dias. <gasps> Mira. Es Ezequiel. Zeke, look at how grown up you are. Ooh, and strong, too. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, this is a gift from the parishioners at St. Florian. Oh, thank you, padre. Uh, next month, I'll pay the church back. Uh, the patrona Joan has promised to make me an assistant foreman. Que bueno, verdad, padre? Daniel, assistant foreman. Well, good for you. That's wonderful. Esperanza, are you pregnant again? Si, sí, padre. You know, how do you say Daniel? He's very macho, pues. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you're a wonderful mom. <laughs> good luck to you. Daniel, come here first. Venga, mija. Vamos, padre. Um, maybe you don't want to mention this to Patrona Joan just yet. Get the job first. She thinks Mexicans got too many kids, right? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Thanks, Bob. Don't you worry about it. Padre Joe, Padre Joe, I live in your Jesus. Wait, wait a second. Come here. You saw who? El Señor Jesus. Really? As for that? For that. Where did you see him? Up in the sky. You saw him up in the sky? See. Si. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. That's okay. I'm just finishing up, honey, winding down. 
So Paris is now the living room, huh? Oh. You can do better than that. There's the studio in at the recreation center. Oh, honey, this is fine for now. Do you know, uh, we should be getting cleaned up. We've got to beat my brother's very soon. Annie, hmm? the leotard still fits. Nice. Thank you. So, how is the holy roller business these days, Joe? The faithful turning out? Well, it's more like uh, sleeping in. Well, maybe you ought to offer some premiums. You know, you remember when you used to fill up your car, you get a set of glasses? Yeah, like uh, six apostles to a set. <laughs> Did you hear that, Candace? Six apostles to a set. You get that? Uh, yeah, I get it, Jim. So, Joe, did you ever look into that Trinity thing upstate? No, he hasn't. Because I think that is a real opportunity. I know, I know. I'm going to talk to Margaret Cameron about it. Oh, I bet they take you in a minute. No, I don't know about that. Oh, I think they would. Oh, yeah. I've spoken to Bishop Trask. You've already been selected by the search committee. You are a shoe in You talked to Bishop Trask? We had a nice little chat. You're the only name on the list. Jim, I'd really rather you didn't interfere in my situation. Interfere? That's interference? That is the way business is done, Joe, whether you know it or not. I know about business. I know how to do business. Thank you. What is with your brother? I never asked him to pump me up to the bishop. Yeah, Jim's just trying to be helpful, but Trinity is a wonderful church. It's, it's, it's such a real opportunity for you. I know that. So why don't you make the call? You can make a difference there. You, you can help people find their faith, follow your dream. And I can't make a difference here in a small town where everybody knows me. How in the world could I make a difference at a huge church like Trinity? As far as faith is concerned, at times like this, I can't even find my own. See you guys. Where are you going? Heather's. This late? Joe. Dad, it's only 8.30. Where's David? I don't know. Be home by 10. <sighs> I know, Dad. that unusual, Miss Cass, really. Um, David has trouble expressing himself, probably because he's shy with his peers. There also seems to be some resentment towards certain authoritarian attitudes. Just how many classes has he cut? Too many. Where does he go? Well, some of them ditch school and go to a snow's cut. They hang out, I believe is the term. What is that, Snow's Cut? A uh, mecca on the river, isolated. Exhilarating, I imagine, because we are not supposed to know about it. Could you just send someone there and bring him back? Our budget won't allow us to send out a posse. Look, folks, David is a very smart boy. He's very talented, in fact. Very smart, very talented, resenting certain authoritarian attitudes, notwithstanding, how is that possible? If he won't or can't make an effort, or if he continues his antisocial behavior, I'm afraid you're going to have to find an alternative school choice. I can't get over it. The kid ends up missing half a semester where does he go? What does he do? We don't even know. I'm his father. What am I supposed to do? Nothing. Because if I discipline him, I'm causing harm by exemplifying certain authoritarian attitudes. I'm endangering his self-esteem. How are we supposed to have any influence over our kids? Well, at this point, I think all we can do is set an example. Yeah, but that's not enough. We, we messed up. Kids have no rules of conduct to follow. Rules, oh, excuse me, too constricting. Authority? hurtful and repressive. Direction, it might stifle the creative impulse. So what do they do? 
they're forced to make up their lives as they go along. No wonder they end up getting pregnant, dropping out of school, living in despair. This is the direct result of existing in the New Age sanctified, God-forsaken now. What? A lot of passion there. You gotta try that in one of your sermons. Sorry. No, I'm not kidding. She would beat all those empty pews. Hey, did you figure it out yet? Huh? Big hands on the 12. It's one. All right, is it AM or PM? <laughs> hey, I'm thinking about going down to the mall later, getting that new crime ridden CD. <coughs> Let's go steal it. All right. David. Oh, I don't know. I'm supposed to do some stuff. What a wuss. Fight me. David! What's the matter with you? Why aren't you in school? <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? You're grounded for the rest of the semester, and you're going to school every day, starting now. There's a fire somewhere, isn't there? Dear God, I'm so scared. Dear God, I'm so scared. Please do something. Help the little boy. Please.
Child, please save this child. out of there. I wasn't. Thank you, <coughs> Thank you Ernie. It wasn't hey, for me. Joe, I never... <coughs> oh, honey, don't try to get out. Oh, oh, I'm okay. Just a lot of smoke in my throat. You could have been killed. I don't need a hospital. Just, just for tonight, you know, you can probably go home tomorrow. Oh, I might as well go back to sleep. <sighs> yeah. um, well, we're gonna go get a cup of coffee. Can, can we bring you something? No, I'm fine. I really am. I'm lucky. Oh. Very lucky.
Okay. How do you get out? You walked out. It happens. People in critical circumstances do amazing things. Grandmothers lift trucks off their chihuahuas. <laughs> My grandmother couldn't get the lid off a jar of peanut butter. But he says he saw a fireman. I think it was a miracle. A mirage, maybe, not a miracle. Do you know how many different kinds of things people think they see in a fire? Uh, the heat and the flames, they paint pictures on your minds. Joe saw a fireman who wasn't there. You've got to separate the truth from the fantasy here. Uh, okay, any of you guys going there after Joe? Uh, it was God. Little Ezekiel Garcia says he saw the Lord in there. Look, let's be logical here, okay? Now, a guy goes into no, no, a fire... No, just any guy. That was the Padre. A priest. Now, see, that's where you're making your first mistake. Joe Cass is a human being just like the rest of us. Okay, fine. But that doesn't mean there wasn't some kind of divine intervention. Right. From a fireman who, for some reason, isn't speaking out. Maybe a good friend of Joe's. A shy, quiet guy who doesn't want any attention drawn to it. You mean like Ernie Blevins? Hmm. You said it. I didn't. Look, it could be Joe, okay? Now, he's trained. He knows how to read a fire. Now you're talking. He has a kid with him. The adrenaline is pumping. He just got out. With God's help. Fine. With God's help. I wouldn't worry about it. Joe knows what went on in there. He's a hero. He just doesn't want anybody to think so. To Joe. I'm up. Father to Joe. Oh, man. What? Joe Cass, rector of St. Florian's Episcopal Church, denies that he is a hero, saying that it is only by the grace of God that he and Ezekiel Garcia escaped with their lives from the fiery Holocaust at the building which housed many migrant workers from the Woolrod Vineyards. So what's wrong with that? That's the next part. Some citizens, including members of the Spanish-speaking community, believe that a miracle has occurred. Well, it was miraculous. Yes, but it's been, been taken literally. But didn't you mean it literally? I didn't mean it literally, literally. I thank God for everything. I believe he was there, spiritually, but not in person. I saw what I saw. It was a man, a fireman who directed us out of there. Well, I'm sure whoever it was that helped you will step forward soon enough. Yeah, possibly when this dies down. You know, Joe, I don't care how you got out. I don't care if, if a band of bright-tailed seraphim bore you aloft. Or you just plain stumbled out on blind luck and dumb instinct. All I care is that you got out. All right, everybody, let me have your attention. This was supposed to be my birthday party, but I can always have another birthday. It's not every day we get a bona fide hero. To the hero. It was a wonderful thing you did, Father. Speech, speech. Oh, don't get him started. Well, <laughs> thank you, thank you. But this is completely unnecessary. I, I, I really didn't do anything. I've already told you. There was a fireman with us, and it was purely by the grace of God he was there and got us out. And saved a child in the process. Let us <clears throat> not forget. Come on, Joe. We're all here by the grace of God one way or another. What you did was an act of pure heroism. There was a fireman. Of course there was a fireman, Joe. You. So what do you think of my brother-in-law, Bishop? Hiding his light under a bushel, modest to a fault? A guy like this would stay packed away in a little town like this till he was old and gray. Well, uh, Jim, look a little closer. I've got some gray hairs that are coming in real fast by the minute here. Listen, I'm hungry. Anybody want some cake? Daddy, I do, I do. All right, great. <laughs> And uh, then we get to open our presents. I don't mean to push this too hard, but Trinity needs a man like you. Well, thank you. That's very flattering, Bishop, sincerely. But uh, sometimes I feel that I'm not up to the job. I'm used to preaching to a hundred people at the most, not thousands, and I worry. How are the parishioners up there at a big church like Trinity going to accept somebody like me? Just be yourself. People know you, they trust you. You have the training. And from what I've seen over the years, you have the soul for the job.
Thank you. I appreciate your confidence, Bishop, but I'm, I'm a small town kind of guy. Oh, come on, Joe. Don't give me that aw shucks routine. <laughs> All I'm asking is that you go to Trinity and talk with Margaret Camden. See for yourself. I've made an appointment for you already. devil am I supposed to refuse the interview? You're not. Well, I, I, I figure if I take the trip into the city, I'm halfway committed. Uh, You're right. Yeah, it, just go. You know, it, it'll be a couple hours, that's all. You know, you find out for yourself what you think of Trinity. Yeah, you're right. to the city, Father? To talk to the bishop? Uh, well, just seeing some friends at Trinity. To, uh, talk about the miracle, Father? Well, uh, I wasn't thinking of doing that, actually. Just boring old business, you know, priest stuff. Adios. Adios, See you, Father. Have a good trip. When I was a little girl in Bible school, I, I got the idea that God was this really huge man with this long white beard who never slept. He's not? <laughs> what made you finally decide to come see us, Joe? Now, aren't you the man who swore that he would never preach in a fancy church preaching to, what did you call them? God's frozen people. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> yes, you did. Well, wait a sec. What did you used to say about me? Oh, Father Cassie is in this world, but not of this world? Well, see, I take that as a compliment. Uh, in a way, it was. <laughs> A-A-C-A-N-A-O-A, -A -A -A. no shortage of A's around here. Um, Sunday school in the annex, adult relationship classes, uh, human sexuality classes, diversity seminars, gang outreach, gay and lesbian outreach, outreach, outreach. We're very involved. We're extra careful these days about who we bring to Trinity. In the past three years, two priests from this parish have been arrested. One for public drunkenness, the other for stealing from the hunger relief fund. A big reason we wanted to talk to you, Joe. A no-nonsense preacher from the old school with his feet on the ground. Joe, please ask God to get my husband, Carlos, to stop drinking so much beer. With your help, tell God to make my boyfriend, Drew Farinella, not to fall for Heather Yoder, who's trying to get him away from me with her bigger you-know-what. Dear Reverend Cass, Please say a prayer for Maria Elena Sanchez, a prayer that she gets well from her cancer. Thank you from her son, Ramon Sanchez. Amen. Good morning, Father. How are you today? first get the pain? About a week ago. It was just a twinge. It didn't really hurt bad for a couple of days. And does it bother you all the time, some of the time? When? Um, some of the time. I have to be straight with you, Mrs. Cass. The x-rays are inconclusive. Now, there's something going on with your femur. Now, that's your hip bone. It may be a stress fracture. You said you recently started dancing again. 
Uh, we're just exercising, really. I haven't actually danced. Well, all the same, you have put some pressure on it, and perhaps in your enthusiasm, too much. Now, fortunately, and frankly, I think this is the most likely possibility, a stress fracture is not difficult to treat. Some medication, some rest. What's the other possibility? A bone malignancy. A malignancy? Yes. So, cancer. Now, I want to eliminate that possibility as quickly as possible, so um, I'm going to order a few more tests so that we'll know exactly what we're dealing with. Can you give me any percentages here? No. I could say good chance it's a stress fracture. Unfortunately, until I get a look at an MRI and a bone scan, that's the best I can do. How do I, how do I get these tests? My office will arrange everything. We'll call you. In the meantime, no exercise, no dancing. And if you want me to call your husband, maybe. No, no, no. Uh, thank, thank you. Thanks, Dr. Stevens. people in front of our house. Don't they have their own houses? Well, yeah, most of them do. Why are they at our house? And why are they having candles? You said that I couldn't have candles. Well, they want me to pray for them. Oh. Will they always be in front of our house? I don't think so. Is it because you saw Jesus in the fire? Who said that? Who told you I saw Jesus in the fire? All the kids. You and Ezekiel saw Jesus. That's what they say. Well, that's not true. People shouldn't litter. No, they shouldn't. When I grow up, I want to be a ranger and teach people not to throw stuff in the woods. H hang on a second. Wait a second. I thought you were going to be a priest when you grow up. Don't you still want to be a priest? I don't like all those people in front of my house all the time with candles. It's annoying. Wow. I know why they're there. Why? Because they think you're God. do for months. You, you have? Mom, yeah. it wasn't even messy. Well, St. Florian's is holding a drive to take care of people who lost everything in the fire. So, do you want this? Mom, this is your favorite sweater. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Well, Mom, are you all right? Yeah, um, why don't you come on. I'll make you something to eat. Mom, are, you're gonna leave it like this? I'll do it later. This is getting way out of hand. I got people all over my yard now, you guys. I'm still just me, you know. You mean you can't walk on water yet, Father? No. Manny, I can't walk on water. I'll tell you, people are starting to act a little nuts about this thing. Obviously, some kind of miracle happened in that building, Father. Miracles happen every day. It's just part of life. Come on, Joe. You know, there's something happened in that fire that goes way beyond the everyday. Oh, I think the sun's gonna come up again. Kind of miracle. That is a pretty big miracle if you think about it. You know what I'm talking about. Light shows, you know, celestial harps, golden stairways to heaven, that kind of stuff. I hate to disappoint you guys, but someone, a member of the fire department, got us out of there. Now, that is a miracle, I grant you, but it's not what you're talking about. Water into wine is not my specialty. What goes on in the human heart, that's my ministry. So then you think it was an inside job, right? It had to be. Love thy neighbor 
so high-minded. Love thy neighbor. Beautiful, poetic, impossible. What if thy neighbor is a jerk? Love him anyway? Well, that is the program. Well, yeah, you say, I'm sorry. Can't do it. It's too tough. Ask me to love something else. Anything. Pizza, opera, football. Anything but my neighbor. Well, you know, obviously, it's easier to love what's pleasing to us. People who love us back, for instance. But what does it take for me to love someone who already loves me? Nothing. That's the whole point. We're being challenged. We're being asked to go beyond our narrow definitions of love. If all God wanted us to do was to love people who are lovable, he wouldn't be asking much. He's gonna change the alternator. Chris. I thought we had it all planned, you know? I even got birth control. Shh. It's different now. Well, why? Why is it different, Cruz? Come on, let's get out of here. You know, that stuff with your dad and everything. Maybe when nobody sees anything weird anymore, then we could do it. Look, if the Lord is hanging around here, it's for a reason. I'm not gonna, like, attract attention to myself in a bad way, you know? So chill, okay? Maybe sometime, a couple of years from now, whatever, we could like get married or something like that. Wait a minute, married? I mean, are you out of your mind? I'm 17 years old, I don't wanna get married. I'm fine, great, don't. Screw it, I've gotta get back to work. <sighs> Thanks, God. Thanks a lot, that, that was really great. It was just so smooth. Keep it up. Humiliate me some more. I love it. Amen. Yeah, I understand. But, um... So the results will take how long? Three days or no... Yeah, I understand. I, I'll, I'll be there Wednesday. Thank you. What takes three days, Mom? Oh, I didn't hear you. Um... I have some uh, oatmeal cookies in here, Mrs. Fryman's recipe. <laughs> What's the occasion? Just thought I'd make something that you all like. Well, so it takes three days. Nothing important. Then why don't you just answer, Mom? Joyce, everything that happens in this house is not your business. Mom, I'm an adult. I can handle things. I'm sure you can, honey. How was your day? Oh, it was just wonderful. It was probably just like yours. St. Florian's, Camila speaking. Oh, yes, certainly. One moment. It's Margaret Camden and Bishop Tresk for you. Margaret, hello. How are you? Oh, great, fine, thanks. Joe, um, you didn't tell us about this mysterious apparition in the fire. We just heard about it here. I didn't, uh, you know, it was, it was just a fireman. Uh, <laughs> Nothing mysterious about it. One of my parishioners, a child, is at that wonderful stage where he thinks everything is magical and marvelous. It's just that... Well, people, some of the vestry here included, are getting the idea that we're offering this position to a priest whose personality is more important, perhaps, than the message of the church. No, 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 I'm, I'm still the same old Joe I always was. Well, good. Um, we'll talk soon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Joe. All, all right. Bye now. Even if I do want that job at Trinity, I don't think they'll want me. Hey, Joe. Hey, Gina. Hey, hey, look at this. 
Baby Jesus. Hadn't that something? Little hands and feet and everything. Some guy was selling them. Carves them out of timbers from the burned out building. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Give me the five eight, sweet. It's gonna stare the right and off that or hand it over. I'm the same guy I've always been, you know. I know. I got a good wife, occasionally difficult kids, a beat up old Jeep, a lot of debt. Amen, brother. But I have a chance to get a better job, to get ahead for once in my life, and then this happens. It complicates everything. I wish I could help you. I want you to get that job. Well, I... Thanks, Ernie. I appreciate that. I don't even know if I want the job. I'm not sure about that. It's just... I wish that whoever it was that got us out of that fire would come forward. It was a fireman, plain and simple. What the hell else could it be? Mommy's letting me light candles. Yeah, good find your dad, honey. Tell him I'm putting dinner on the table. You know, Mom, it, w it was the most embarrassing thing that happened to me today. Billy Sumner actually called me Joyce the Jesus Freak. I don't even go to church. Honey, your credentials are impeccable. Please ask your dad to come in. Daddy! Daddy, it's dinner time! Mom, I don't know how you can stand this. He just waved at me like he was the Pope. Well, he's feeling a little overwhelmed. Sorry I'm a little late. It just doesn't seem to be any good way to disengage myself. Well, you can tell them that your wife and children would like to see you. It'll blow over, Annie. Someone will see the Madonna at a monster truck rally. Madonna? Who cares about Madonna anymore, Dad? There is a God. I'm just not sure how this is going to look at the Trinity. Just hang on a second. Let's remember what this is all about. I would love it if the man responsible for saving us would step forward so I could thank him. Are you sure you're not enjoying this, uh, this attention, you know? Maybe looking for some answers that you haven't gotten? Okay, maybe I'm guilty of being a little pleased with this outpouring of belief. Belief in God or belief in you? Well, that's absurd. It's not that at all. And I talked to Margaret Camden. I think she understands. Yeah, well, I hope so. Because I cannot wait to get out of this town. Since when? Yesterday, you were hysterical that you might be forced to leave all your friends. Yeah. Well, I've grown. How come Ezekiel Garcia gets to see Jesus and I don't? Well, honey, we really don't know what Ezekiel saw. Hey, hold on, David. Aren't you going to introduce your friend? It's Cecilia. Okay, bye. We're going now. Just a moment, please. Uh, they were studying, honey. Oh, really? Yeah, I was just skiing Mount Everest. Wouldn't it be better to do this after David walks Sheila home? That's okay. I can walk myself. You know, what's the matter with you? Did Guy come down and say, Joe, you're always right? Oh, wait, no, I, I'm sorry, I forgot. He saved you from the fire first, and then he said, Joe, you're always right. Well, you know what you are? You're a fascist, that's what. I want you out of this house right now. Fine. Great, you know what the hell with you? you, you all you are is a hypocrite. You preach love, but you don't practice it. Stop saying bad words to Daddy. No, shut up, Amy. Don't talk to Amy like that. I could have been a Catholic, you know. They don't allow their priest to marry. That's not funny. Sorry, bad joke. Boy, I wish you could handle this stuff better. What's going on here? I mean, what's happening to our family?
I'll find him. Daniel. Buenos dias, padre. Ah, the bishop wants to talk to Zeke. Did you hear that, Esperanza? El obispo himself wants to see Ezekiel. I want to talk to you for a moment. Frankly, this is getting out of hand. This kind of worship is not exactly... Don't worry, Padre. Don't you tell us that God is present in our lives always? That if we seek the truth with his help, we can never fail? Have confidence in the Lord, Father Joe. It was a miracle. My son saw a miracle. Just my luck, someone who listens to my sermons. Could I trouble you for the use of that chair? Young man, I don't think you know who I am. I am Bishop Tresk. Zeke, uh, may I call you Zeke? I hear that you have seen something very special. I seen your Señor Jesús. Mm, really? And what did he look like? You're the bishop, you know how he looks. <laughs> <laughs> did he look like a fireman? No, but he was big, though. This big. Oh, that's very big. And where did you see him? Lots of places in the air sometimes. And what did he do? He took us out of the fire, me and Padre Joe. Oh, and then what happened? Then he told me how a good boy I am and how strong I am. Oh, and then what happened? Then he jumped on his automobile and drove back up to heaven, right into the sky. His... Automobile. Kids. Uh oh. Amy, what are you doing? You could burn down the church. Get over here. You know you're not supposed to be in here at night. You either. Oh, we're gonna have to change the altar cloth. Don't tell Daddy, will you? No way. Now let's go home. You said bad things about God in vain. I know, Amy, and I'm, I'm sorry about that. Did you see Jesus? No, Amy. People don't just see God all over the place like that. Then where? Where do they see him? Right there, okay? In your heart. That is where he always is. But you have to believe in him without seeing him. It's called faith. You sure do know a lot of stuff, huh, David? <sighs> no, not so much. So does Daddy. He's really nice, David. And he thinks that you should like him. And I think that you should, too. Let's go. Come on. Promise you won't tell Daddy? As long as you don't play with matches anymore. I promise.
test results from the hospital. That's what's in three days. Well, what kind of tests? Don't tell your dad. Well, Mom, I mean... He is struggling with everything. There, there is so much going on right now. The last thing he needs is another worry. You know, someone else he's got to take care of. But, you know, he, he would... Promise, Joyce, you cannot say anything. Okay. There's a, a problem with my hip. Um, it may be nothing. It may, it may be something. Just right now, it's uh, scaring me to death. Are you going to be all right? So you never said anything about going into the fire and getting them out? No. I didn't want to get a lot of attention and everything. It was very heroic what you did, Mr. Blevins. But you really got everyone going. Will Joe still get the job here? Because he deserves it. He's the best preacher in the world. He could do a lot of good in this city. Trinity Church needs him. You really love Joe Cass, don't you? Yes. You were very brave, Mr. Blevins. There's a lot of brave people in the world. Different people, different kinds of bravery. Quite a man, your friend Ernie Blevins. Doing what he did and then not taking the credit for it. He's a special guy. Joan, congratulations. I understand you've had a wonderful crop. I've been blessed by good soil and marvelous workers. And as a show of appreciation, I'm going to be financing new housing for the workers. Safe, quality housing. Now that I will drink to. Well, that's the least I could do. With such an emotional faith, you people have so simple and fundamental. Well, I think it's kind of wonderful to have a town where someone has seen the Lord. Oh, I agree. It would be wonderful if our Lord appeared before us. But, well, in this case, I think it's only served to distract from the good work that Joe is doing with the community. When I was a kid, I remember my grandmother swore that she saw the Holy Virgin on TV. Really. Every night for two weeks, this would go on. Always during car commercials. What happened? And they changed her medication. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ernie. <laughs> That's what he's been building. A flying weed whack. No, he, he said he had something up his sleeve to congratulate the vineyard. Is he gonna die, Mama? Daddy at the hospital? Yeah. I'm glad you told me, Mom. I'm glad that you trust me enough. Well, why not? You're almost an adult. <laughs> Almost, is right. 
You know, sometimes they go in the wrong direction trying to be an adult. What do you mean? Nothing in particular. Mom, are you okay? Oh, yeah, just the waiting's hard, you know. Well, that's why you should have told Dad what was going on. Oh, no, I'm, I'm talking about Ernie. Norman Mailer. You've been, Norman. What do you mean? Oh, we got a problem. We got a problem. We got a major problem. Hey, don't kick it! Don't kick it! Crazy old fool. The thing doesn't even work. There's no one on there. You're insane, you pervert wacko. What's going on, Wit? Hey, come on, man. Let's get out of here. Bag it, David. Hey, what are you doing? Hey! We're doing this for you, man. You hate this place. I was raised here. It's where I live. <sighs> What's the matter with him? What do you care? You crazy old bastard. Your dad's about the only one in this town who likes him. He's a priest. It's his job. He's as crazy as this old fool. Jesus Christ, my butt. Because you bought the beer. Yet if you tell anyone, we're gonna come back and kick your butt. It's, it's okay, Bob. Uh, we're gonna be okay. Uh, uh, hey. Hey. I can't stop the bleeding inside. I know. Uh, I'm scared. I'm sorry for all my sins, Joe. Have you loved God? Yeah. Have you loved your neighbors? Well, yeah, pretty much. Of all the men I've known, Ernie, you have the least to fear. From your lips to God's ears. I'll do my best. <laughs> Just an expression, Joe. Right. I <sighs> hope you know how much you're loved. Everybody counts on you. Especially me. Almighty God, please look upon this, your Joe, servant. Yeah. It wasn't me that got you out of the fire. W what? I lied. You what? Come on, Ari, I saw you. No. You saw a hallucination or angel or something, but... You didn't see a fireman, you sure as hell didn't see me. You lied for me? I had to. The bishop and that woman were figuring they made the wrong choice, so I confessed. <sighs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have said nothing. Forgive me. For what? You didn't ask me to do it. Oh, man. Oh. Oh. John 3.16, say that to me. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth oh. in him shall have eternal life. Shall not perish, but have eternal life. Right, shall not perish. Uh, isn't that great? <laughs> Do 
Don't you just love that part? Oh, no. man. No. Oh. No. Uh, somebody? Somebody help! Oh, man. Please, somebody help this dress. Let us remember Ernie's spirit, which has at last emerged from its seed to bloom forevermore in paradise. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. May the Lord bless him and keep him. May the Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Amen. Amen. Is that love? The man had two kids. Is that love? How could you do this? How could you? God didn't do anything to Ernie. Didn't you tell me that a long time ago? Sometimes it's just an accident. God didn't do anything to Ernie. When someone dies, you told me that doesn't mean that God doesn't love him. Ernie died in an accident. Hey, how'd you get so damn smart? <laughs> I listen sometimes. Listen, uh, that was a gutsy thing you did. Doing what you did for old Bob, standing up to those kids. Oh, yeah. Sorry about Ernie. Come up here a lot when, we were, when I was young. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so I can wait. Mommy, we're home. Uh, hi. I, I get that this is Anne. Hi, Dr. Simmons. 
Oh, you are, um, better, actually. Really? You're sure? Oh. Thank you so much. Right, bye. Ah, oh, honey. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? I, I, I couldn't. You were so busy. Everything isn't about me. This is about you. You matter. You. Oh, Annie, don't you know how important you are? for you, none of the rest matters. Maybe with a stress fracture, this wasn't such a good idea. Oh, I was downright therapeutic. <laughs> you want no secret? I'll tell you one, if you no. tell me one. You first. Okay. As awful as this was for me, I think this scare was a blessing. Yeah? Before I went to the doctors, I was kind of just going through the routine, you know, you and the kids and everything. Each day was pretty much the same as the day before. But when I walked out of that hospital, and I was afraid that I had cancer, and I could lose everything that I loved. Everything looked different. You know, things looked clearer. The sky was bluer. The clouds were whiter. And the kids, Amy, could not have been more precious. And Joyce, what a wonderfully mature and solid young woman she's become. David, who I usually want to throttle. I, I, I could see how he's, he's struggling with his convictions. Even you. I even liked you more. Oh, yeah? <sighs> yeah. I don't want to go back to the way it was. You know, I, I want it to stay as clear stay in the moment. So, I'll dance. And I will remember this hip. myself to think once again for a moment that it really was a miracle. But I've been trained not to look for signs, but to be in the here and now. And yet, Anne, I wanted so to believe. But, but it was a miracle. Come on, Anne, we both know better than that. It was havoc in there. The smoke, the fire, the brain-numbing fear. I saw what I needed to see, an illusion, a mirage, whatever it took to get us out of there. It, it doesn't have to be that kind of miracle. I mean, look, look at everything that's happened since then, you know, the, the people in the town, the, the church, you know, all of us. You know, it's all changed. So what, what went on in the fire doesn't really matter because um, faith happened. Remember you asked me about my dream? 
Uh -huh. This is it. This is mine. Right here. And if I can be an instrument of God's word, then that's the icing on the cake. Where'd you find this? What? I thought we left this at the hospital. We did. I didn't. Why would I put that in the closet? That's a mess. Well, if you didn't and I didn't. Honey, how did you live through that? I don't know. This is my last time. Joyce, Joyce, you know, you were baptized in this church. I don't remember, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Sweetheart. David, what a wonder. What a privilege it is to be your father. Baby girl, father, son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. I want you to know that you gave me so much more than I ever gave you. You opened my heart. That is the miracle. The other miracle, the one that seems so astonishing, is just a reminder of the miracle of our children. And the miracle, the wondrous miracle of the people we love. Those are the miracles that we cannot possibly live without. And I think what I've learned is that the real miracle has to be lived day to day. Easy to say, not so easy to do. It takes faith. And everyone arrives at faith in his own time. The Lord said to the Apostle Thomas, because you have seen me, 
you have believed. Blessed are they who have not seen, yet have believed. It's, I see, how can we do that? Believe if we haven't yet seen. Could it be through faith? Going on with our daily lives, even if we don't always know why we should? Going to work every day, cutting the grass, getting the kids to school on time, doing our very best to ensure that they reach adulthood in one piece, doing the thousand little things that we believe are right and necessary, but sometimes we feel it's pointless to keep on doing them. We have to have faith. Now, some of you might say, well, easy for you. Look what happened to you. You'd be right. Not everyone is tapped on the shoulder like that, but you don't have to do it all at once. Even I didn't do it all at once. You all know that I'm leaving St. Florian's, and you've come here to say goodbye to me. Goodbye. I want you to know something. I have to be honest with you. I'm terrified. I am terrified that I'm making a big mistake. I'm terrified that I won't measure up and that I won't find my soulmates up there at Trinity that I found here at home with you. I believe that God, or a divine intervention, saved me for a purpose, and now I stand before you so afraid that I am not strong enough and I have no courage to fulfill it. Some Christian soldier, huh? And I'll tell you something, I have to have faith. I have to have faith that those people up there in the big city are you and I will speak to them just as I speak to you with my heart. Now, please join me in a prayer for our beloved friend. Dear Lord, for your devoted servant, Ernie Blevins, let your loving face shine upon his adored children, Rena. Tommy and his cherished wife, Gina. Be gracious unto them and give them peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now let's turn to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Daniel. Father Joe. Thank you. God be with you, Padre. I forgot to tell you. La Patrona John made Daniel foreman. Oh, that's great, Daniel. Congratulations. That's wonderful. It was the logical choice. Joan. So Florence will never be the same without you. Come back and see us, won't you? Absolutely, I'll be back. What's this? Okay, Father, surprise. Hey, surprise. For you. What? Look oh, at you. You knew about us. this? What are you guys? Oh, I can't believe. Look at everything. Oh, you guys. This is. I'm, I'm speechless. Oh, somebody call an ambulance. Joe Cash is finally speechless. <laughs> you can't believe that. Oh, man. Hey, Bob. Bob? Aren't you going to say goodbye? That's okay, Bob. David has something for you. David?
Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Thank you, Father Joe. Okay, Pop. Annie. This is... Huh. What'd you see, Joe? Anything special? The sky, the clouds, the trees. Every bit of it is special. I think it's time to go. Come on, guys. It's a bird, son. A bird? It's a bird. <laughs> 